A few days after the surrender, we went over to our ranch for a little time of solitude, horses, and the slow return to sanity. We are not sure we'll be coming back to Berkeley for a permanent, despite the ties that make us want to. We are not too sure of anything personal, longing, both of us, so much for stability, yet knowing that we have been put in a time and a place where we may not be able in conscience to attain it. The circumstances are heavy with misgiving and far, far more difficult than they should be had we power to remake the world to be as we think it. The veil of secrecy was lifted and most Americans believed the atomic bomb had played a decisive role in ending the war. The scholarly professor, the unworldly student of metaphysical poetry, the former leftist, was suddenly a national hero, a celebrity, father of the atomic bomb. In 1947, he was appointed director of the prestigious Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton. He was Einstein's boss. But much of his time in the post-war years was spent in Washington, where his counsel was eagerly sought at the highest levels of government. He served on two dozen committees, testified frequently before Congress, and was even asked to run for public office. Although he advised the government on its atomic arsenal, he argued adamantly and publicly for the international control of atomic weapons. And his sense of what he wanted to accomplish when he was in the government had less to do with physics than it had to do with uh, with the, with the uh, uh, e sensible use of the of this awful instrument that we made i have been asked whether in the years to come it will be possible to kill 40 million american people in the 20 largest american towns by the use of atomic bombs in a single night? I am afraid that the answer to that question is yes. I have been asked... Whether Oppenheimer tried to maintain control of the atomic energy enterprise to prevent the Air Force from abusing the weapons that he had created. I think the only hope for our future safety must lie in a collaboration based on confidence and good faith with the other peoples of the world. I think he felt that he wanted to make a big difference. Um, I would arg I argued with him quite a lot after the war. Um, I felt that the um, the kind of big difference would happen if one really taught people a lot about the, the, the dangers of the bomb, about the possibilities of cooperation. He said there wasn't time for this. He'd been in the Washington scene. He saw that everything was moving. He felt that he had to change things. Um, from within. History again and again shows that we have no monopoly on ideas, but we do better with them than most other countries. He was a philosopher king in his own mind, a man of wisdom who could get along with other men of wisdom who also had power. He had the way of impressing himself very strongly as a wise man on people who were influential. But it is certainly not possible to take the definition of atomic energy and the prohibition against industry, helping other nations industrially, literally. It is certainly not possible to do that, Mr. Senator, because everything we do is contrary to it. Everything we do is what? Contrary to it. It was a different world after the war. Americans perceived a new threat, Russian and Chinese communism. Arms control was an unpopular idea, even before the Russians shocked America by exploding their own atomic bomb in 1949, far sooner than anyone expected. The arms race began in earnest, and Oppenheimer's Council for International Collaboration was now less attractive to policymakers than the advice of his fellow scientist, Edward Teller. Even during the war years at Los Alamos, Teller had urged the development of a secret weapon, radically different and radically more destructive than the atom bomb, 
the hydrogen bomb. The General Advisory Committee to the Atomic Energy Commission, chaired by Oppenheimer, issued a secret report opposing immediate development of the hydrogen bomb on both technical and moral grounds. I'm sure he thought that there was absolutely no need for the hydrogen bomb, that there was no need really for any of these bombs. And he felt that way even though he had worked on, on the arsenal of, of fission bombs. Despite the committee's advice, President Truman initiated a program to develop the hydrogen bomb, and scientists at Los Alamos began to design the new device. Robert Oppenheimer was not among them. This is an atomic bomb, about the size of the one that devastated Hiroshima. By 1950, it was considered too small for our defense. The hydrogen bomb being developed would have 1,000 times the destructive force. One morning in November of 1952, the Pacific island of Alugalab was vaporized by the first hydrogen blast. All that remained was a mile-wide crater on the ocean floor. Disbelieving America saw the Russians explode a hydrogen bomb within the same year. There are no secrets uh, insofar as atomic and hydrogen bomb development is concerned from the communists. I, think, I don't think we have any secrets from them at all. Senator McCarthy's anti-communism dominated the 1950s. When he mentioned Oppenheimer's left-wing past publicly, it meant to some that Oppenheimer was fair game. Um, affidavits to the effect that he had been a member of the party, that he had recommended uh, communists for work in the A-bomb and H-bomb plants. Uh, a lot of close relatives, of course, communists. That doesn't, again, doesn't make him a communist. But his wife, uh, admittedly, was a, uh, the wife of a, an official of the Communist Party. Uh, brother, a very active communist. Again, as I say, McCarthy did not attack Oppenheimer directly but he had helped create the climate that prompted President Eisenhower to seriously consider a letter from a former congressional aide charging that Oppenheimer was a Russian spy. Thirteen years of surveillance by campus police, the FBI, military intelligence. Wiretaps, reports from informants. As many as five agents shadowed him in a single day. Most of it was old news, material disregarded in the past by General Groves and others, when Oppenheimer was considered essential. But in 1953, when presented with a thick dossier, Eisenhower immediately ordered Oppenheimer's clearance suspended, pending a hearing. He had very much the feeling that he was giving the best to the United States in the years during the war and after the war. In my personal opinion, he did, but uh, others did not agree. And in 1954, he was hauled before a tribunal and accused of being a security risk, a risk to the United States, risk to betray secrets. The proceedings were conducted by the Atomic Energy Commission in secret. There were no photographers, no reporters, no television. Even Oppenheimer's attorneys were excluded when classified material was discussed. At issue was whether Robert Oppenheimer, principal architect of the atomic bomb, could be trusted with state secrets. Along with numerous accusations relating to his left-wing past, Oppenheimer was specifically accused of opposing the hydrogen bomb on technical, political, and moral grounds, and of having misled security officers in matters relating to his old friend, Hokan Chevalier. 
During the war, Oppenheimer had reported George Eltonton's attempts to share secrets with the Russians. He told the story in such an ambiguous way that intelligence officers were left with the impression that...